What's up, everybody? Nerd Jam Report. Ryan. What have we been saying? Star Wars Kung Fu. Uh, oh. It was... I had to see it a few times just to see what we we're about to see, Ryan. I, I usually tend to go to new rock stars, emergency eyes, awesome, obviously, to get the breakdowns and stuff like that, but... I'm just fascinated in seeing something new that only a few can do, Brian. And it's going to be, from what I can tell, Brian, this is going to be, this is going to tell Star Wars, the Star Wars people, the Star Wars executives, the reaction to this is going to let them know what we want. Your thoughts, Brian, on the trailer? To me, there's two there are two themes here to to focus on. So the trailer, first of all, we talked on our previous show, the sizzle reel they put out on the festival circuit that they never published is basically the first 45 seconds of this trailer. Is There's the scenes of the young Padawans in a circle, and there's a scene of Leslie Headland fighting Carrie Ann Moss in what looks like some kind of bar or pub. Those yes. were the two scenes they used in the sizzle reel. So if you didn't get to see it, you will finally get to see what got our attention, that initial hand-to-hand -hand force power knife fight in the hallway, which is choreographed much more like The Matrix than it is like what you're used to seeing in Star Wars. Do you know who's the choreographer for that? I don't. Uh, I can look it up. But I will say, so they had that scene, and I was like, okay, that's great. But then for me, I don't know if it was like this for you, for, for me, the scene in the middle of the trailer where it looks like i think it's amanda stenberg's character who's fighting someone else and she's trying to kick him and he's he blocks the kick and you get this wire work high-flying acrobatic yes, 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 reaction yes. i was like that's it that's it right there i don't need to see anything <laughs> else just tell me the it. date <laughs> so then they and of course then there's a nice there's a nice sort of climactic shot too which really got my attention which is when all the jedi are igniting their sabers and they get served by some kind of power that blows yes. them off the screen i was like what is that so that looked awesome too right we've been saying this since the beginning start when, since, ever since we saw the grainy you know leaked version of this we've been saying star wars kung fu uh what does the excitement for this do to the future projects of star wars that supposedly are coming up so the other thing i would say is cinematography visuals so we're focusing on fight choreography right so this is a style of fighting and we've talked about it george lucas would tell you star wars devolves so the further back you go the more advanced and the more sophisticating the fighting should look, which this show would bear out. The other thing that, you know, Leslie Headland was asked about the volume, because everything Star Wars, you get asked about the volume these days. No volume in this show. And that was the other thing. You can kind of see, I was staring at the, the trailer and I was like, it looks like they're somewhere. And she said, yeah, I mean, there's sets that they built basically around England and London. And that's where they shot the whole thing, but zero shots done in the volume. And I think like when you look at the action, when you look at the perspectives, like for example, when that four saber throw is done, it's the little things like that, where it's shown from the perspective of the hand that threw it, not yeah, from the yeah. person. I like that stuff because it looks yeah. a little different. It almost looks a little yeah. bit more like the video games, honestly, yes, than it yes, does yes, like, yes. like the movies. And so to your point, if we're seeing like wire work, martial arts, except with the force if we're seeing original we're camera seeing angles tiger, hidden dragon. exactly and if we're seeing that in the star wars universe executed well listen man that's gonna set the bar for these other projects to you know again raise do the they bar. care do they care these man, people look yeah. like they care it is quite possible that they do brian but i can care about singing but I ain't a good singer, or I used to be, or whatever. You gotta bring in new blood, Brian. That's all, you gotta bring in new blood. You gotta bring in new blood. You gotta 
get different people talking different things because if I'm in that room hearing some of the stuff they're talking about, Brian, I'm telling them no immediately. Well, I think it goes to what you said before about it. Everything, everything Kathleen Kennedy always feels like they want to play it safe, that they just kind of revert to this sandbox that they've known dating back to 1977. And, you know, I, there, I can pull up any number of interviews with George Lucas where he, you know, he might know a thing or two about Star Wars. And he was he's always said he wants to see things that are new. He wants to see originality within the universe. And so that's why Andor worked so well, right? It's like it was the essence of Star Wars, but done in the context of a political thriller. This feels like the essence of Star Wars, but done in the context of a martial arts, maybe Western like that. Yes, that's yes. what you want to me. I, that's what I want Star Wars to be. I want it to feel at its core, still like some of the Star Wars I know, but push in new directions with interesting yeah. characters. And I can say, listen, there's a lot of representation in this trailer. I, there'd probably be some people that come for this trailer because of that. Yeah. I gotta be honest, I didn't care. Like watching this trailer, I'm like, I don't care. I don't know any, because I have I no history. Yeah. I have no history yeah. with these people. So all you gotta do is sell me good writing and storytelling and I'll be invested. I don't care what they look like. Yeah. It looks interesting to me. It looks new. I have no baggage from prior shows or movies with anything in this production. Yeah. Brian, you mentioned, you said one thing. Um, there aren't any Easter eggs. I don't know what time this is set in. Is it thousands or hundreds of years I think ago? It's, so it's High Republic. So it's hundreds of years prior to any of the Star Wars movies we've seen. So that's, I mean, like, I don't know what an East, and I don't even know, honestly, I don't know the literature quite as well, but yeah, I'm not yeah, even yeah. sure the literature has gone back this far. The only thing I could think of where you would find Easter eggs, like I said, would be the video games. Because yeah. the video games have gone back pretty far. Yeah, um, yeah, some, yeah. Of the, some of the RPGs. So maybe there's some nods to that that I, I don't see, yeah, but yeah. I kind of liked it. I was like, okay, I see the force. I see, I see costumes. I see worlds. I see space, but like it's all like white space. It's all yeah. fresh. And it didn't seem goofy either. It didn't seem silly. There's that word again. When that word starts to creep up in my mind, we might have a problem. But, and there was no such thought, no such existence of that, that word when I saw that trailer, right? When I even saw the leaked version, we've been saying it's Star Wars, Kung Fu. We should be, I don't know, we should coin that word. Brian, do some <laughs> Upper sticker. <laughs> Before somebody take it. But that's what it is, Brian. Where are they going? That is the question. I mean, yes, they want to start. Going is the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they going? But, you know, yes, they. they, they she wants to start the academy, but Again, we go back to that word that I expressed previous to this heroine is the believability aspect. Okay. Harry Ann Moss. Still got it. Still got I it. I cannot wait, Brian. And aging amazingly well, by the way. <laughs> the, the idea that we're 20 years on, 25 years on from the Matrix, it's and like she, she looks, looks like Harry Ann Moss and moves like that. <laughs> Come on, man. If this is the thesis of the show, I'm there for it, which is that that we hear a little narration of it's not about the good. It's not about the bad. It's about who has, who control, who takes and controls power when it comes yeah. to the force. I'm, I'm there for that. Like this idea that basically what we're seeing is almost like a Highlander style assassination of Jedi right and left. And they've got to kind of stop the assassin. That's pretty cool. Like that's some spy yeah. craft as well mixed in with, um, yeah. This. And again, Les Leslie Hedlund did, you know, did a very different type of show on Amazon Russian Doll, but it was very creative and very well received. So, yeah, no, I think I think June 4th, I don't know why it took so long for this to come out. Like I said, my only gripe is that we're only getting this basically two months before the show hits. I, 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 I still question why we didn't get something you know, an initial, this trailer three, four months ago, and then we'll get a second trailer, you know, in, in April, May to build hype, but it is what it is. That would be interesting, Brian, because I'm sure, I don't, I, did you, the, did the lead version have fan reaction when, when they were watching? 
not the one that I was able to see before they took it down. I did not have audio on mine. I would have loved to have seen that because there's no way you don't go crazy watching that for the first time. There's no, just, there's just no way. Oh, so what's yeah. happening with the Ray movie? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, lots happening or rumored to be happening or not happening with the Ray movie. This, this to me, I mean, I, I've said I think it's a DOA project. Um, but Daisy really making a lot of public com comments. Um, I'll give you hers first, and then I'll give you the bombshell on the back on the back of it. So, asked uh, at South by Southwest, she's promoting another movie there. Is the movie still still called New Jedi Order? Which sounds an awful lot like the old Captain America title, New World Order. Yeah. But, um. And she said, quote, I don't know. I mean, I think so. From the announcement, I don't think it's changed. And then confirmed, a script is happening, and I'm going to be reading it imminently, which is very exciting. So hit the brakes. First first, hit the brakes sound. No script. Hasn't seen a script. Should be reading it. This movie is not that far along. I don't care what anyone says. She, if the star of the movie hadn't seen what's happening and doesn't really know what's happening, yeah. you need to pump the brakes on how yeah, realistic yeah. it is that this is going to happen. Okay, so that's that's number one. Here's my thought on that. Yeah, go for for, it. for me, I think I'm interested in seeing Luke's Jedi Academy. Not I her. agree. I agree. I think that's part of why this movie's gonna fail because people are gonna see it and feel that like it's the wrong it's the wrong character with the wrong academy. It's, the wrong time. It's, it's but, okay, it, it doesn't work. But listen, you know, listen, I, I can't blame Daisy really because Hollywood's Hollywood. And you got to get your you got to get your work. And she was at least honest about this at South by Southwest. So here you go. After Rise of Skywalker, quote, there weren't many offers coming in. It's not that there wasn't any. I remember finishing and thinking, oh, it's quiet and strange, end quote. She needs the money. She needs the job. I get it. Like, I, I can't I can't yeah, hate you for taking it in. if you offer it. If you ain't getting the roles. Yeah. Which is kind of what, I mean, like Mark Hamill obviously never, like Harrison Ford became Harrison Ford, right? Became an icon. Mark Hamill never became, I mean, he became a voice actor, right? Celebrated voice actor. But he never became like an A-list leading man, despite being Luke Skywalker. You know, that's just how, how it went. But here's the bombshell. Okay, so we hear all that. That all sounds good. <laughs> Reports, though. Now, this is unconfirmed, but... <laughs> From the blogosphere <laughs> out there, this is on, on Twitter, you can find it. Quote, I keep hearing that one of the projects Bob Iger and Disney mentioned this week that they have quietly killed off but haven't made public is the Ray movie. They just haven't told Daisy Ridley yet. Here you go. Which I'm goes sure. back to the thing about was Charmino Bade Chinoy fired, which that's been on the internet a couple weeks ago, was, was she removed from the title? And now you're hearing at least some rumblings that this movie's dead before it even happens yes. which i would suggest would be a good move if they did it certainly certainly and if the acolyte crushes on tv it this movie could look very bad by comparison because it's a very jedi oriented movie um yes. so and by the way to answer our, our question so chris cowan and mark ginther and darren knopp are the fight choreographers for yeah, what we, does it list any credits? I just say, I just see the names. I would be interested to see if they they have done any previous work. So the Ray movie, dead or alive, we don't totally know, but the rumors won't go away that it's it's dying. Yeah, that movie doesn't get made because the, at the end of the day, Brian, you you're spending nine figures for this movie, aren't you? Oh yeah, uh -huh. I mean yeah. Now, even with a reduced budget, it's probably a one fifty. Do you dare take a chance on, on 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 continuing to sour the people on 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 Star Wars? You know what I'm saying? No, you don't. You don't. Especially when you got season two and or coming. You got Acolyte coming. What's going on with this Rogue Squadron thing? <laughs> Oh, so yes, so we we uh, as as Kathy Kennedy's world turns, Patty Jenkins on the podcast circuit. We'll have more to say about her in a minute. But 
she lets slip that she is back working on Rogue Squadron, a movie we thought was dead and buried. She claims now that there is no Wonder Woman 3, she has returned to the Star Wars universe and is still working on the film. Pablo, what do you think about this, if it's true? It's a big risk. Um, but certainly there's some interest there, Brian. If she can do something similar to what Top Gun did, uh, but do it with Star Wars, that is, that is, that, that is the, the, the catch right there. That is the interest. That's the hook. I agree. I actually like the subject matter. I like the idea of following potentially almost, you know, we just saw Masters of the Air on Apple TV, following the idea of like, a, you know, a band of rebels flying X wings, Y wings, whatever the vehicles are on a series and potentially a series of missions and sort of a dog fighting bombing that would normally type of movie that would normally be set in like World War II or to your point set, you know, in the Top Gun sort of modern warfare era. I, I'm here for that as an idea. Um, and I've always been interested in it. I, I don't know where this will go. Patty Jenkins is notoriously difficult to work with. So clearly, if this movie happens, it's going to be her movie start yeah. to finish. We know that she will walk away and has walked away before from movies. But and it seemed like she had walked away from this one. But apparently, oh, you know, she also might need the work. So she's coming back to try to resurrect it. But again, it's like with Kathy Kennedy and Star Wars, you never know. That's what I mean. Like when they make these announcements, you never know what's actually going to happen and what's not. Working with someone who is difficult to me, by to, uh, I don't know what does that mean to you. Working with someone who's difficult in this in in that world, possibly. Well, I think to me, it's you know when you talk about big IP it's it's code for the push pull between the director's vision and the studio's requirements i mean that's really what it comes down to you know we yes there's legendary stories of directors on set right some are tyrannical some are super easy uh, to work for or work with but at the end of the day it's about control of the edit right i mean at the end of the day that's what it is and so when it comes to marvel when it comes to star wars when it comes to dc there are always more cooks in the kitchen. Almost. There's almost How do you always feel more about cooks that, in the though, kitchen. Brian? I don't think it's a one size fits all. I mean, you because you, you, you we history is littered with examples where well both models working well. Like you, you can't you can't you can't say like, oh, if we just give the artist complete freedom, that that yields the best product. I mean, do I don't need, I think I need to list all the, you know, there's plenty of examples, right? I mean, we, we talk about the polarization of Zack Snyder movies all the time as a great example, Lightning Rod. And we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then we talk about situations where, you know, somebody like Christopher Nolan has earned the right, or Denny Villeneuve most recently earned the right to make the movie they wanted to make within Batman or Dune. And the output was Academy Award level. Um, there, there is no one solution. We've also had examples like Rogue One's a great example. Director gets replaced. It's a total mess. But you know what? It's a great movie. Yeah. And it worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But people like Nolan, Ryan Coogler, Pop, perhaps, and some others, certainly Ridley Scott, the OGs, Scorsese, get. I mean, those are geniuses, get, though. You, you, are yeah, naming, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are naming geniuses, yeah, right? Yeah, Versus. Yeah, yeah, yeah solid to talented filmmakers there is a difference and like we do see that yeah certainly. but even geniuses certainly, go certainly. wrong right even geniuses have disastrous films like that you know not every scorsese movie is a classic yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the acolyte trailer does that sound interesting the rose squadron uh, movie uh, it's, it, it's, it could be interesting brian this Ray situation just got to go away. And, and, I would make it. It's not the same. If, if, yeah. if, I'm, if you're proposing me a trade of I get Rogue Squadron, but we wipe the Ray movie, thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's crazy. I don't understand why she hasn't gotten work. I think she can be really good in a lot of different roles. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this. And let us know also 
if you guys know for certain whether or not how long ago or what time this is set in in the in in in, in the in Star Wars is it hundreds to thousands of years? Uh, let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Jerry. By the way, those guys. The show goes on. Yeah.